I've always dreamed of being an astronaut since I was a young child. And the moment when I read about the call for volunteers to move to Mars on a one-way trip with the Mars One project was really a life-changing moment. I made the decision instantaneously. My heart was beating, my mouth went dry. And in that moment, I made peace with the, the fact that I might not ever return to Earth and that I would do everything in my power to live out the rest of my days on planet Mars. We are hoping that the selection will be at some stage next year. Um, so I'm preparing by, I've gone on a 10 day silent retreat to see how I deal with being alone. As expected, I loved it. <laughs> I was actually keen to continue in silence after it ended. I ran the, the ultra marathon, the Two Oceans ultra marathon this year in Cape Town. Beautiful race. Uh, never have run that long before, but uh, survived, so that was good. And my research is increasingly looking for the evidence of the building blocks of life that are being detected in comets, meteorites, and also in interstellar clouds and space. Um, and in this sense, moving to Mars would be an ideal opportunity to be on the ground looking for the same kinds of evidence and precursors of life or life itself, um, which I'm currently doing from, from Earth. Thinking about the idea of living on Mars, I think the busyness of Earth would be in stark contrast to the sort of desolation on the planet Mars, at least until we set up a significant society there. So on Earth we have all this activity, geological, as well as the biodiversity that's all around us, from the insects to the plants to the humans sort of teeming on the surface of the planet. Whereas Mars, as far as we know, um, does not seem to host any life at the moment. Uh, what else will be different is the, the gravitational field, is 38% of the gravitational field on Earth. There's no global magnetic field on Mars, so we still need to research in more detail what effect that might have on plant growth or on human health. Um, we'll be living inside, so I have lived in Singapore where there were days where my colleagues didn't go outside at all. I always made a point of going outside, but I think there are parts of Earth that have extreme conditions where people do spend a lot of time inside. So in that sense, it wouldn't be too different from these extreme parts of Earth where you need to suit up places like Antarctica or Siberia or Dubai where you have to think quite carefully before going outside for any extended period of time. There's a research team from Belgium at the moment um, called SEED investigating what type of seeds for what type of crops we would bring along with us. Of course, we'd need good nutrition and sort of also maximum uh, kilojoule output to sustain ourselves. Um, we'd be vegan by the look of it, although insects or possibly fish in the, in the, in the permaculture type structure could also be options. Um, so we look forward to updates from this research group and others around the world on exactly what type of crops we would grow. But we've already grown a, a list of things in the International Space Station, which is different to Mars in terms of having no gravity. Um, we've succeeded in growing definitely rockets and tomatoes and um, cucumber and several other vegetables, which you can check out online. So there's no reason to believe that we wouldn't be able to also grow these crops under controlled conditions on Mars. When I say I hope to find evidence of extraterrestrial life on Mars, I really don't think it's going to be anything big because we've been observing the surface of Mars for decades, since the 60s, and we've never seen any evidence of, of large organisms living on the surface there. Uh, the possibility is that there are existing living systems below the surface where we have not currently explored. The rovers have gone have dug down to a depth of like 20 centimeters, so basically that under the surface of Mars is a big unknown at the moment. Um, we're expecting, if we do find evidence of any life that was either living billions of years ago or possibly still living now, to be microbial in nature, i.e. on a micrometer scale, so small, small enough to have escaped our, our attention until now. Um, there, there is methane gas uh, fluctuations on the surface of Mars, and on Earth the outputting of methane is associated with life. So this is, a, this is an exciting potential area to, to search for life. Also, there are areas on Mars where liquid water has been reported to sort of surface and cause patches of, of dark coloration during, during summer and then retreat again during winter. That's another um, location where we'd be looking for evidence of life. Probably using robots, because one thing in the search for evidence of life on Mars that you want to avoid is the contamination of the surface of Mars with Earth bacteria. This would prevent forever knowing for real whether there was Mars, uh, life on Mars before we got there or not. So this is really crucial to actually keep humans away from these um, areas where we expect maybe that it might be a good place to look for evidence of life. We'd send ro ro remotely controlled rovers to these areas to do those investigations. Mm -hmm.